This episode of Taproom Travelers is brought to you by Lazy Monk Brewery. Managing Director in Product Development and Marketing. Carol Wurzma, and I'm Operations Manager, and I guess between the two of us, we own the place, so it's the other part of it. <laughs> yeah. I was living in France for uh, about a year. Uh, one of the things that I did while I was in France was to spend time visiting various apple orchards, various cideries and seeing what they were doing there and what the processes were that they were using in producing their products and, uh, and doing a lot of uh, drinking of cider. So that was uh, a lot of fun, yeah. We bought the farm in 1998 and in 1999 planted a few apple trees and we're now up to about 5,000 trees. It's the soil, it's the temperature, it's the terrain that uh, helps to define our terroir here. Many people think of cider as a beer and I'm afraid that we contribute to the confusion by packaging some of our cider in beer bottles. The process of making cider is more like the process of crafting wine than it is like crafting beer. The ingredients are different as well. Uh, instead of using grain, we use fruit, just as they do in crafting wine. There are some cideries that are now using grain. There are some <laughs> brewers who are using fruit you know, in their beer. And so that's one of the interesting things about the craft beer and the craft cider movement, and that is that there is a fair amount of crossover. People are uh, bold enough to try some different things. You know, why not throw some hops in your cider? But to make a really good balanced cider, you need more than just sugar and acid. One of the things that you need are some phenolics we call them, or some of the components that include the tannins, okay? And those will bring structure and more of a mouthfeel to your cider than you would get without that. So when you think about a cider apple, you can think in terms of apples that either fit into the tart category, or they fit into the bitter or bittersweet category, or bitter sharp, and you also use some sweets. But because you want to produce a balanced product, most ciders will contain more than one variety of apple. There are over 2,000 varieties of uh, apples that are recognized in the world, and then there are even more that are unrecognized. There are actually very few apples that you can use as a single variety and make good quality cider. And those are frequently referred to as the vintage cider apples. We grow one of them here, a couple of them here actually. One of the unique things about our situation compared to almost any other uh, place right now, and that is that we do everything here, and that makes us very much an artisanal operation. Mm -hmm. We grow our own apples, we use, take those apples in right away, we crush them, we juice them, use them for our products right away, and that's all locally grown. We don't use mm -hmm. concentrates, we don't use any products from elsewhere, it's all Wisconsin product. When it comes to uh, hard cider, a lot of people like it because they, they say it is gluten-free on the whole. You know, you don't have to worry about uh, the grain and the impact that that can have for you. The far and away the largest, of course, because of the demand is the Honeycrisp. The Honeycrisp hard cider is uh, one of our uh, most popular ciders and is crafted from Honeycrisp apple juice, honey, and then it's lightly sparkled. Our cider is fermented apple 
with honey. Scrumpy is part of the long tradition of cider making because it comes out of old England. And by history, scrumps were the windfalls, the withered little apples that were laying on the floor of the orchard. As people have gotten more sophisticated mm -hmm. in their cider tasting, they yeah. understand the drier taste better and more interested in the scrumpy now, and so we're going to be making more of that also. The Dolgo crab apple wine that we are crafting into a cider that we're calling a crabby cider. That is a cider produced from the fruit of these trees that no longer have any leaves on them. And the reason is that these trees are early flowering, early bearing trees. And so it's time for them to uh, go to sleep. The fruit comes out usually in mid-August. The Rocky Dog Cider that we have now is uh, crafted from an apple that didn't originate in this country, originated in the UK called the St. Edmund's Russet Apple. And uh, one of the characteristics of the St. Edmund's Russet Apple is that it is a variety that is uh, self-fertile. It's one of the few apple varieties that will pollinate itself. And as a result, we can get a fair number of apples on a, uh, on a regular basis. And so we can use that apple in crafting some of our uh, Somerset cider and also Rocky Dog. Our ciders include both carbonated ciders and still ciders, or non-carbonated ciders. So those still ciders tend to be more like what we call specialty ciders. Golden Russet, Kingston Black, Lake Pepin, Somerset. Another specialty cider that we have available is actually more of a, a wine. And it's a product that we call Royal Cider. We basically crafted a cider and uh, we fortified that cider with apple brandy, all from Wisconsin, of course. And we produced something that we called a Royal Cider, which is an apple uh, dessert wine that runs about 18% alcohol by volume. It's been really part of the project with us to teach people about ciders as well as varieties of apples. Sharing what we knew about the products, the apples, the ciders, and helping people understand those things. This has been a uh, work of, of passion for us and something that we've uh, derived a great deal of pleasure from in addition to being able to uh, make some contributions that we think are valuable. What we do here, we use apples. That's what we think cider making is all about, using apples and fermenting them to produce a, a beverage that you can enjoy. Lazy Monk is a popular brewery located in downtown Eau Claire, Wisconsin. The family-owned brewery has fantastic beer, and their taproom's atmosphere is something to experience firsthand. We hope to see you there. Lazy Monk, a family brewery.